Hello, I'm Bruce Shady, and today in Homemade Science, I thought I'd show you a game that my students came up with in our study of centripetal force and inertia. Now, when we're looking at these concepts, there's a lot of demonstrations we can try. This first one starts with a wine glass and a marble. The idea is to pick up this marble using the wine glass without ever touching the marble with your hands. It's a very simple trick. It's been around for years. Another simple demonstration of centripetal force involves using a balloon and some pennies or some steel nuts. I'll start this by inserting the penny into the balloon. The next step, of course, is to blow it up. Tie it off. And then twirl it around. I really like this one. I'm going to replace the penny with a steel hex nut. It's always been a fun demonstration, and if you can imagine 25 students doing this at once, it can get quite loud. Now the next step would be to question what happens to the nut or any object that's no longer constrained by that centripetal force. For example, I have this soaking wet towel, and if you can imagine, if I take it and start spinning it around, Of course we find that droplets go off in all directions, but we really want to take a look at what happens the moment that centripetal force is released. We've demonstrated this several ways in my science class. We've demonstrated the behavior of car tires in mud. In spin art, the excess paint splatter clearly shows that it's moving tangent to the spinning paper. It's moving off the paper in a straight line, and the only force acting on it now is gravity, pulling it down. We can see it again with these marbles mounted on this Lazy Susan. I'm going to give this a clockwise spin, and off they go. Here in slow motion, we can see that same behavior. Once free of the spinner, there's no centripetal force acting on each marble, so they move in a straight line due to inertia. The same would be true for the particles of paint. The curving trail of paint is simply because the drops leave at different positions. Looking back at the marbles, we see the same type of curve. Now let's take a look at some other examples. In this piece, the idea is to get the balls on the ledges on the opposite sides. To do that, We'll put it down on the table and give it a spin. The veins on this spinner move outwards as I move it back and forth through my hand. Here's Abe Lincoln as a lever toy. The thing I want you to notice is that the legs extend out as it rotates around that center point. The same thing happens to Homer Simpson as he rotates around the vertical bar. A few years ago I demonstrated a saw blade that was made out of paper. The three liquids in this bottle have different densities. Notice the layers as I hold it sideways. As they spin around, the densest material goes to the outside. Here it is in slow motion. In this case, a tack forces a ball into a curved path.
Spinning cups on a tray vertically is a classic demonstration for centripetal force. And on the horizontal. Here we go. <laughs> Here's the same demonstration, only with a much longer string. And again, here it is on the horizontal. Without a centripetal force, the path of an object is going to be in a straight line. Notice the path of the water when the cup falls off of the tray. This is a game that my students made up. It's called inertia shuffleboard. The pucks travel forward in a straight line and they're shot with a rubber band. In our investigation of centripetal force, we came up with another game. It started by spinning a ball inside a wooden hoop. Releasing the ball, it would move away tangent to the circle of the hoop. The next step was to see if we could aim the ball at a certain target. We enclosed the table with rulers to keep the balls on the table. Our targets were very sized blocks with numbers on them. The idea was to knock the blocks off for scoring. You had a choice of a complete hoop or one with a cut out of it. And the rule was simple, you had to stay behind this line. Just like the shuffleboard pucks, the ball follows a straight path once it's released from the hoop. <laughs> well, there it is, another game dealing with circular motion and inertia. I hope it's one you'll try for yourself, and as always, thanks for watching. Okay, bye.